Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another super cool radio interview. I'm your host, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a great guest joining me this time. I'm super excited to chat with her. She's an amazing musician from Tennessee, and in July, she just finished a tour with Cassidy Pope. Please welcome Natalia Taylor. Hi. (laughs) Thanks so much for having me. Of course. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I know we got quite a bit, quite a bit discussed with your music and the tour and everything. Heck yeah. <laughs> but before we dive into all of that, a uh, question I've been asking my guests lately, this is probably the most difficult question I, I will ask though. Uh, if you could have dinner with any two musicians throughout history, who would they be? Dolly Parton and Miley Cyrus, no questions asked. Never mind. That was the easiest question I'm going to ask today. I think about it at least once a day. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly Parton twice, if that's an option. Sure. <laughs> she's my, oh, she's my muse. I love her. Very good. Well, that does roll into my next question, though. And, like, what inspired you to pursue music? Uh, it was, like, I don't, I don't know. I've done it my whole life, like, starting on a little karaoke machine in my room. It was just, like, the, as far back as I can remember, the only thing that I've ever been that drawn to. Um, and then, obviously, middle school comes around and you learn about, well, let me start off by saying Hannah Montana was my first concert. So like, right, I'm, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm obsessed with everything that this is. And then middle school comes around and I learned that you can make it a job. Um, and so from then on, like, that was my hyper fixation. I was like, I don't really know what that means, but like, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> well, right on, right on. Yeah. Uh, definitely, you know, starting at a younger age with everything and just, you know, pursuing it. So like, when did you like know, like, Hey, this could be a full-time thing I can get like paid for. Um, I don't know. I feel like it was just something that I always did anyways. And I, I didn't love anything else that much. So I was like, I'm just going to keep doing what I think you're supposed to be doing. And maybe hopefully one day it'll pay. And then I learned that like Nashville exists and other people write songs and you can sing songs and Taylor Swift exists. And it was like the typical, like little girl being like, I want to be like Taylor Swift one day for me to be like, all right, I guess let's see what happens. Oh, right on, right on. <laughs> but now, like, kind of moving forward with that, so I, uh, the latest song, Queen of Hearts, uh, mm. also features Cassie Pope. Yes. Uh, so, like, how did that come about? Um, so I played a show with her in Nashville back in December. Um, yeah, December 2023. Gosh, I, sometimes I forget what year it is. Everything moves so fast. After um, 2020, I usually forget like what day it is. They all blend together. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I played a show with her back in December, um, and we have the same booking agent. Um, and so she works with a lot of people that the people that I work with work with because the music industry is like a small town. Like everybody knows everybody. And so she works with a lot of people that I knew. Um, and also having the same agent when we heard about the tour coming up, they submitted me for it. Um, and then one thing led to another and she said yes and was willing to take me out of my first tour. And it was the most magical experience. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm, I will be getting into uh, the tour. But question before, before we get to that though, um, so like how was it working with Cassie Pope for Queen of Hearts? Um, I had known her and I was like, I was really nervous to ask because I've been listening to Cassidy for over a decade now. Like she is one of those people that I grew up listening to. Um, and I don't really know or didn't at the time, like how all the business stuff works. I was like, I can't ask her to write a song with me. Are you crazy? And, uh, my buddy Dave was like, just ask her what's the worst. That, like, okay. She says no. And I was like, all right, you're right. And so I asked her, we booked the session. Um, and we had so much fun doing it. And then the tour came about and I was like, it would be extra really super cool to maybe have her collaborate on it. And so that's where all that came into play. It was just like 
the timing of everything worked out and she's so generous and wonderful and willing to help whenever and wherever she can that she was like, heck yeah, I'm down for it. So I'm glad to hear it was an awesome experience. Obviously Queen of Hearts, fantastic song. I very much enjoy it. So like, what do you think was like the biggest thing you learned for like working with Cassie Pope? Um, how to take care of your people. Very like, nice. I learned more about her because I've been watching her career, like I said, for over a decade. So like I got that part, like I completely understand. And like, she is so inspiring, but watching the way that she carries herself in that way and like interacts with people and like just the way that she navigates her business world is like all about, I don't know, just like treating people well. And I think that's not that it's rare these days, but like you don't see it firsthand as often. I feel like, and Cassidy is like the perfect example of that. Oh yeah, hundred percent agree. And I, I don't know, yeah, like it is sort of rare though, unfortunately. Like with some people that you know they uh, uh, don't, unfortunately, and right. for some kids, not everybody. There, you know, but I, I think it's it's less common, unfortunately, nowadays. Yeah, I, yeah, unfortunately. But I think that's why it sticks out so much when you do have like those kind of experiences, especially like you know, for what I do, like I, you know talking to me and different musicians like the people who are like that like they, they stick out more yeah yeah no she's she's got the whole treating people really really well thing down to down to a t she is a gem of a human being definitely definitely so now diving into the tour now so I, as yeah. i said ju just wrapped up i think july 31st was the last day of the tour i want to say yep i'm glad i got my research right uh <laughs> so how was it oh i i I feel like I can't find enough wonderful things to say about it because with it being my first tour, like I didn't really know what to expect. So I was just taking everything as it was coming to me and also hearing stories of like other people that have toured and like some people don't have a really great experience. Um, and even if it's not so great, like the, to be in a room every single night with Cassidy and the Foxies, like it felt like being on tour with my big sisters. Like I, I felt so supported. I was I had the opportunity to, to ask a bunch of questions and like really try and understand what it means to be a touring artist and like watching how they navigate chatting with their fans or like their live performance. And like, I, I just learned so much and I will be grateful until the day that I die that that will be my first tour. Like what were some, like some of the highlights for this tour? not to beat a dead horse, but watching Cassidy and the Foxies perform every night. Like those are two of the best front women that I've literally ever seen. That part, um, meeting people was so much fun. Um, and also like getting to play every night. Cause it was like practicing every night almost, but like in a new environment. So it was like, something was always a little bit different, but also like the same at the same time. So like before we went on this tour, I, I hadn't played more than like 10 shows, I think it was. Um, and so like, I I don't know what to expect. Like I haven't been doing this for a very long time. Um, and so it felt nice to like get to that point where I started to feel more comfortable and I didn't feel like a, a baby deer learning how to walk. Like I finally got in the groove of like, okay, we, we sound check, we gear up, the show's going. Like that was, that was the best part is like learning to be comfortable. I know for sure, for sure. So, like, how long did it take, like, in getting into that groove of like this one? Check the sound check is this one, you know, set time it. Like, how long did it take for that? Um, probably by the third show, I was like, okay, I understand like the flow of things, but also like every day and every venue and every city was different. So it was like there was always something where it was like, okay, what do we do today? Like, how does this work? <laughs> but. <laughs> With and time change. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but with that crew of people, like they totally took me in and like took me under their wing. And I, I really didn't have to worry about much at all. Cause I was just like following the herd. I was like, okay, I guess this is what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad to hear it's a very positive experience, especially for the first tour for you. So like, did you feel like going into this tour, like prepared to tour? No. Heck no especially because like I don't have anything to compare it to so I didn't know what to expect and I was like but I I'm also like type a when it comes to planning things so like I had been planning as soon as I got the I don't even remember when I got the email about it but as soon as I found out that tour was happening it was like all right like merch set list band outfits like I probably over prepared which like 
and grateful that I did because I, I did feel very prepared, but, um, I didn't feel, I, I didn't know what to expect. I was like, I could go out and like flop. This could go out and I could do so poor. I was like, I don't, I guess we'll see. Uh, <laughs> from what I've heard and like the videos and photos I've seen that I think you, you did a great job and very well received, uh, from the people who were at the shows as well. Thank you. It was so fun. I will. I'll probably talk about that for the rest of my life. I think, especially you know, again for how positive it was, especially for being a first tour. Because I've heard, I've interviewed people, and like they said, yeah, my first tour it went absolutely horrible. So I'm yeah. glad you have the opposite experience of that, and actually everything went very well for you. Yeah, it was wonderful. I'm but really the, grateful. The, the tour pack, you know, you the Foxies and Cassie Pope are phenomenal tour package. So whoever put that together, fantastic person. That's what I'm saying, I'm like. The fact that I get to watch these guys every night, like, are you sure I can come? Like, this is so cool. <laughs> so now, like, I'm curious to know, like, switching a little, actually, before I get to that. So a question that one of the, as I told you, a friend of mine, actually two friends of mine, uh, mm -hmm. went to the Indianapolis show, Luke and uh, Big A. So, like, they wanted to know. Oh, like, my so God, I remember them. Yeah, yeah, Luke and Big A. Yes, they were standing, like, if I'm on stage, they were standing to the right. They are a party. They yes. So that is hilarious. I didn't know that's who that was. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're uh, listeners of the podcast, good friends of mine. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, as soon as they, like, I trust their opinion when it comes to music. So I was like, all right, I'll reach out and uh, get this arranged. Oh, that makes me so happy. That's awesome. <laughs> So like, so they they were curious. So like, obviously, like off the stage, you run your own merch. So how is it like getting to like interact with people at you know at the merch table and on the stage as well? And honestly, the merch table is my favorite part because at some point it just feels like you're hanging out with your friends. Um, sometimes when I'm on stage, like I don't know, I like black out a little bit where I'm like, okay, this is on stage. Like, tell the story, play your songs, engage with people. But like, there's a part of me that like wants to be down with everybody where I'm like, wait, I want to come hang out with you guys. So like getting to hang out with people at merch afterwards and like just hear the kind of music they listen to and like what they like about going to shows or like where they're from, what they like. And like when somebody says that like a song that I sang means something to them or like resonated with them that like there is nothing that will ever compare to that part. It's awesome. Uh Oh, for sure. You get the, you know, you get to see like the, the faces, like to the music, you get to hear their stories and everything. So it definitely it's a like awesome opportunity for you. Well, and like my songs are so personal to me for the most part, where when somebody is like, that means a lot to me. I'm like, I, okay. I'm not the only person that feels that way. Rockin'. Also, sorry you feel that way, but also we're not alone. <laughs> Exactly. You get the, you know, with the the uh, togetherness with stuff, you know, like you have like similar experience to me. Like, you know, it's, it's, it is cool to hear like other people. I mean, you know, as you said, that you're not alone with stuff, because obviously some of the topics you talk about, it's nice that you're not the only one, or, you know, experience this or someone listening to this is not the only one experiencing exactly. something similar. Exactly. Yeah. As sad as it is to know that like other people feel like the not so happy things that I feel sometimes, like, that part is disheartening, but then also being able to like share the music experience together to be like, we can still, we'll leave it at the door for now and just like have fun and love each other. Exactly. No, it, it's a great way to approach it too. Cause like, you know, music, it, it's a nice escape. But also, it's also a universal language that people who like can't express some of the feelings can actually like feel the, you know, feel and actually like connect with the feelings they're having. If that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> well, and to go back to your first question, like that was like, I think why I was so naturally drawn to it is because like, I, I don't know how to express my feelings. So I was like, okay, if with a guitar in my hand and if I sing it like Taylor Swift, maybe it will like feel a little bit different. <laughs> right, or at least makes you feel a little better. Yeah. It makes it a little <laughs> easier. So now, but I did want to discuss, like move from the live performance side to now the recording side. So like, do you approach like a live show differently than like recording music? Before I started playing shows, no, but now that I have played a couple or like really this past year in writing, I, when I'm writing, I also try to like pay attention to cool live moments that you can have and like map it out in that way. Um, whether that be like a sing-along part or like just cool dynamics. And also 
I have like a, a bit of a stage fright problem. So like if there's a long instrumental in a song, I'm like, oh, I have to put something vocal there so I don't have to like figure out what to do with my body when I'm on stage. <laughs> so like little things like that where I'm like, what are some cool, how will this portray live? Because if I'm gonna write it and gonna put it out, I'm probably gonna end up playing it live. So I just try to keep in mind that part, but it's not like my sole focus. No, it's true though, you know, to have, you gotta know how it's gonna translate to a live set. Cause like, well, at least for me, I don't know what to do with my hands. Like, you know, like, what do I do? <laughs> like, cause I am not, nobody wants to see me dance. Like that is not my thing. I don't have the Tate McRae effect. Like I'm not a dancer. So I don't know when we get those instrumentals, I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I do this to myself? And see, the only person to blame is yourself, too. Because I made the song. <laughs> <laughs> My own worst enemy sometimes. Now, it's always that awkward thing of, like, I, like in a live thing. Like, I work for a minor league baseball team for their promotions team. So, like, if there's, like, something awkward going on, like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. Like, because to me, it looks worse if, you, if people notice, like, oh, that person doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> right. So, I, like, try to lean into it sometimes and, like, lean into the awkward where I, like, all right. We're all going to feel awkward together if that's okay. <laughs> Maybe I should start doing that. <laughs> yeah. It makes it a little less daunting, I think. No, I think so. But yeah, there's, it, it is always interesting in a live because it's real time. You know, you have people in front of you, you're honest. It all you happens in real time. And you can't rewind. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Or but unless someone caps on the phone, then they, you know, <laughs> and then it's, then it, then they can, but, but yeah, no, just having that connection that it happens in real time. So yeah, there's going to be those awkward moments because not, Hey, I've had plenty of awkward moments in my life. So yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, a little bit awkward. That's boring. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, everyone's got the little awkwardness to them. It makes, it definitely it gives a little bit of variety to life. Quirky. <laughs> exactly. But one of my favorite, favorite moments, I was on the dugout for the team trying to get the crowd hype. And it was a little bit, it started raining and like I fell into, so I was on the dugout, so I had the net behind me and like I fell into the net and like oh, was no. in the net. <laughs> so, yeah, so now, like I just tell people, like I'm almost embarrassed proof at this point because of all the stuff like that has happened to me. I'm like, at this point, I'll just go with it. Yeah, honestly, you have to like lean into the fact that like we're all human and we're all going to be a little silly goofy sometimes. Like th the only reason I'm bringing this up is because number one, it's embarrassing. Number two, it was at a baseball game. I sang the national anthem and forgot the words. Ah. It was it, like it was bad. It was bad because like obviously I I know the national anthem, but I think my like anxiety took over and I got out it to the mouth and my brain just went blank and like had to do a whole like like started singing the song, couldn't remember what words came next, had to stop and like call myself out essentially and be like did i just forget the words of the national anthem and start over that's when well, yeah a, yeah that's like when you're like laying in bed at night and thinking about all the bad things that have happened to you like that's one that comes back pretty often <laughs> yeah i could see that living in the back of someone's head for a uh -huh. very long time yeah with that Actually, it's not there for too long but like for right now it's there now i i've like i will say i've seen many people do it because obviously I'm there almost every game, and I will say it's not it's not as easy as people make it look. No, but to do it, and especially in front of a live crowd. Uh, and I've seen some great renditions, and I've also seen some not good renditions. Live. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, my, uh, yeah, but definitely. Yeah. I mean, but that at that point, I think you can only go up after that, right? I was saying, like, what are you gonna do about it? People are, you know, exactly. <laughs> but I, I will be moving off that topic though. <laughs> uh, so, so for you, obviously, you had the opportunity to tour. What was like what, some of the coolest or most unique venues uh, you've had the opportunity to perform at? Mm. Um, Headliners Music Hall in Louisville was really, really cool. Um, and the Foxy's front woman, Julia, um, that's her hometown. And so everybody came out to that one. I had a couple of Nashville friends come out. That was cool. Um, Syracuse. Have you ever heard of a place called Funk and Waffles? No, no, uh, but it sounds cool. Let this be a PSA that if you are in or around Syracuse and you have a chance to go to Funk and Waffles, you got to. I got this waffle with like 
it was like basil, brie, bacon, and apricot jam. And dare I say it might be my death row meal. Like it was so good. Sounds really good. It was amazing. And then where else? I mean, objectively, they were all awesome. Um, Knoxville was cool because that was the first night. And it was, I grew up 20 minutes from Knoxville. So it was like a hometown show for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I really didn't have a lot of like, not that I didn't have opinions, but also I was just like enjoying the experience and like taking everything for what it was. Not even in like a, this one's better, this one's worse kind of way. Just like tonight we're playing in like a concrete basement kind of venue. And the next day we're playing in a cafe. And then the next day we're playing in like a, a big venue with a big stage and cool lights. And so it was, it was just interesting to like take note of the different venues that aren't in Nashville. Cause that was really the only place that I had played before then. Oh, you got, I think you got a nice variety with stuff as you described that like, mm -hmm. you know, cafe settings or like, you know, uh, more of like upstairs kind of setting for some venues. So I think you got, definitely got a nice variety with that. Plus there's so many cool music venues out there as well. But if I, if I am ever in Syracuse, I know where I'm going. Oh, you have to like, I know it sounds a little silly to like hype up a waffle like that, but like I'm hyping it up. It's that good. <laughs> well, I guess I'm going to take a road trip at some point. <laughs> 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 all right so now uh as i'm kind of close starting to close this out now so i'm curious obviously you have queen of hearts out which also has cassie pope on it like who are like some other musicians you like to collab with that you have not yet Ooh, oh my gosh short answer anybody and everybody because i just think to be able to like collaborate with anybody creative is exciting um mm, the main would be a big one for me um taylor acorn would be really cool who else i feel like you ask like in questions like this because i can think about it all day long and then when i'm asked the question i'm like all of a sudden i just i forget everything um holly humberstone would be a dream um mm, there's a local artist um named caroline romano um if you guys haven't heard of her you should totally check her out she is incredible and wonderful i would i think it'd be really cool to do a song with her Right on. But I'm going to definitely check out her music. Uh, but yeah, I, I give I give very open-ended questions, and that sometimes <laughs> is a downfall because then, like, people don't know what to say sometimes. Oh, like, but, there's so many options. Everybody's so wonderful. <laughs> and that's why I give very open-ended questions because you could take that yeah. any direction, <laughs> which I think you gave a very nice variety of it. I, I like the main. You and, you and the main would be a fantastic song, by the way. I love the main. I love the main. They're awesome. So, so I hope that happens. So maybe they're listening right now. If they are, that would be awesome. Call me. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. All right. So I think I already might know the answer to this one, but this is a brand new question. You're the first person I'm asking this question to. So if you could have an artist or musician create a soundtrack for your life, who would you pick? Oh, I love that question. Like present artist? Like anyone. Me? anyone yep mm, okay hold on let me brainstorm the first yeah, another, to mind was hannah montana um there's um, another open-ended question i just asked <laughs> I, I am actually this one's a little bit of a curveball i would say hannah montana or zach bryan Ooh, i was not expecting that right. well because i was thinking about it from a writing perspective and his storytelling i feel like Cause I, I'm such a words person. Um, and like if Zach Bryan's words sonically felt like Hannah Montana's music, that's what I would want my soundtrack to be. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I like that. Would, that would actually be kick ass. I like that. Thanks. I've actually never thought of it like that, but I think that's going to be my solid answer moving forward. I think so. I think so. That's, <laughs> Cause like his, like I will say like, you know, his, his genre, not always my vibe, but, like, the, his lyrics, though, man, can, they're incredible. I could read his lyrics like a book. Like, he has a song called The Good I'll Do, and, like, he has a line that, it, the, what made me a fan of Zach Bryan, there was a line that was, like, she grabs me by the hands just as calloused as I am to say you're proud. And I'm, like, that's so, I don't know. His writing's fantastic. He's great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
fan- he, truly fantastic with his words and just every like sometimes you gotta like just like slow down and just appreciate it because it's just that good. It's just that good. All right, so now as we're closing closing this interview out, so like, what are your plans for the rest of 2025 and into sorry 2024 into 2025? Sorry, I don't know what year it is anymore or day. <laughs> sorry. So we're currently in 2024. What's your plans moving forward? There we go. What are your plans after today? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I'm just. I want to write a bunch. Um, I want to write for other people too. Um, I just want to keep putting out music and whatever that way that means um because i've been doing singles for like the last two years and i think it could be fun to do like a 10 song record and like make it a project whether that be an unpopular opinion these days or not um i think that would be fun um so just writing a bunch and maybe sleeping a little bit i'm trying to prioritize that it's not working out for me yet but we'll get there but yeah just i just want to keep working keep making music and playing more shows, that would be really fun. Very solid plans. Uh, yeah, I I tell you, the last two nights I've gotten like five to six hours of sleep. So mm-hmm. you're it's very relatable. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Sleep just isn't a priority these days. It's all right. I mean, someone told me you could sleep when you're dead. So, I mean, that's kind of how it is going <laughs> for me. <laughs> I've heard that's true. <laughs> exactly. I got plenty of time to relax and be on vacation after, you know, after that. But, you know. <laughs> We'll get exactly exactly <laughs> but i will say focusing on the more lighter side of the, the album i am a huge fan of albums i collect like cds and vinyl and stuff like that so i am definitely an album person like i understand the market for singles but i am definitely an album person i needed to hear that i need to hear that because that seems to be like the general consensus but it's really scary to like actually do it so everybody that has the same opinion as you i'm like okay Okay, maybe I'll do it. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one. I, I was about to say, like, yeah, you're the only one who said that so far. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad. Like, I, I understand the market for it because, like, I don't, Spotify pushes a lot of, like, singles and stuff like that and radio and things like which, again, I totally understand. There's mm-hmm. definitely a market for that. But for me, as, a, as just a listener of music, not, like, focusing on the business side, albums are fantastic and that's where i'm that's where i'm at with it where i'm like maybe it doesn't do well that's okay like it'd still be fun exactly exactly and i know if i'm not the only one saying that then i think i think it'll go good then there we go exactly. <laughs> all right so now for everyone watching listen where are the best place to find natalia taylor online um any social media i'm most active on instagram for sure um it's the most palatable to me, I think. Um, but then music wise, anywhere you listen to music. Um, and I always have to remind people it's Taylor with an A R, not O R, which I need to talk to my parents about that. <laughs> no, yeah, any really Instagram is like the best way to engage and then musically wherever you listen to music, you can find it. Very good. I will drop some links for Natalia Taylor in the description of this podcast as well. It is very funny. I looked up their like the O R spelling, and I was like, I think that's a different person. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. That's not her real name. Oh, really? Nope. She made it up. Huh. Her alias. I didn't know that. Yep. Because yep. I was like, that's cool. And then she was like, no, it's my alias. I don't want people to know my real name. I'm like, you couldn't pick anything else. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. It, it, it'll be all right. At least uh, AR is very unique spelling. So at least. Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> but I will leave some links for the correct Natalia Taylor in the description of this podcast. Please check out and support her. Natalia, thank you so much for hanging out with me here on Super Cool uh, Radio. Anytime. Thank you so much for having me. This was so lovely. Of course, of course. For Natalia Taylor, I'm your host always, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. This is Super Cool Radio. And remember, stay frosty. Stay frosty.